Welcome, welcome, everyone. It is build day. Uh, today, we are building a very special board. Uh, it is my first 40% and my first keyboard of the solenoid. Um, that immediately narrows it down to be the Mech Wild Clunker uh, that we are building today. And I'm really, really excited uh, about this. This is a completely new layout class for me. Um, smallest keyboard I've used is 60%, my HHKB thermal. Um, so 40% is going to be a whole new world. Um, there's a lot of parts. So before we crack into this, I'm gonna show you the other parts of the build, um, cause we can get through those pretty quickly. For stabilizers, I dipped into my stash of uh, Duroc stabilizers that I replaced with TX stabs. Um, I mill maxed this PCB. Um, so it's, it's hot swap at this point. So I'm not terribly worried if these stabs tick. Basically what I've been doing is I've been going through my boards um, and if they have Duroc stabs that tick, I'm replacing them with TX stabs. Um, so I, I don't think these tick. Most of my ticking issues are usually with space bar. So I'm hoping these are good. Worst case, hot swap, we can easily swap them out. Um, switches, I'm very excited about these. These are the big wig linear switches by Keebfront who is either new or suddenly killing it because they are all over the place all of a sudden. Um, with the Doom tactile switches, these big wig linears, um, and Stabbers, their stabilizer product that's coming out soon. They've got another linear switch on, on offer right now that was vaguely interesting. What really excites me about these is number one, the packaging is super cool. It's like, they're all comic book themed switches. You can see here, this is switch number two in the series, Doom being the first one. Um, these are HDPE, high density polyethylene, I believe, tops. Um, palm long stems, linear, so like right up my alley, but they are PBT bottoms. Um, Factory lubed, these sound nuts. Just hear it for me. Just like, that's not scientific at all. I, whenever I get a switch, a new switch, I hold it between my thumb and middle finger and give it what I call the cursory tippy taps. These are the best sounding and feeling switch in my very unscientific test um, that I have felt in a long time. So I'm very excited to try these just stock in this board. That will be, uh, I think, a great treat to try those. On top of the whole deal, because... Uh, <laughs> on top of the whole deal, because 40%, I need to use a keycap set. I know I have full support for, so I'm going to use DSA Milkshake to begin with. Um, for the sound test, I may end up switching this to GMK Minimal. I couldn't confirm I have everything I need in GMK Minimal for this, but I, I know I have those, so we'll be able to top off the build, and it's black on white which kind of matches the motif of the board, so that'll that'll look nice. Um, so it's stabilizer switches, keycaps. Um, I've got myself a uh, Baja Blast for fuel, sponsor me Mountain Dew. And I think that's all the external parts for this. Now we're gonna dip into this box. There's quite a bit going on in here, because not only is it a 40% of the solenoid, it's a through hole kit. So there's quite a bit of building to do. I'm just gonna put this off to the side here. Let's go through the big parts first. So this is the right side up PCB. I always have to look at this one. You can see I have already done the diodes and the mill maxing. Basically the two not interesting to watch or edit parts of this. My elbow is popping the bubble wrap. That's very funny to me. I don't know why. Um, so I've already mill maxed this in the layout I want to use. This supports a number of bottom row uh, layouts and a couple options on the shifty side of things. Um, I've gone with the 1 1.2, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 2.75, 2.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25 layout, which is the default, I think. Um, gone with non-stepped caps because that's probably not going to be caps because this is a 40%. Um, full left shift split right shift so that I get the whole alpha bottom row. What I just said will become more clear as we go along here. But this is more, this is basically the default layout if you look at like the KLE for, for this. Um, so I've done, you know, the first 200 solder joints basically. <laughs> They're just not that interesting. 
on this so that in the video we can we can just look at the cool stuff. Um, not my first time mill maxing. First time mill maxing was the Boston 120%. So uh, not a lot of uh, content occurred, if you will. This is the bottom plate on the clunker theme. A clunker is a uh, you know, uh, definitely at least an American term for kind of a beater, junker car. Um, so kind of got that motif on the bottom here, a little Mac Wild branding on the invisible side of that that my camera is not interested in focusing on because it's very small. There we go. Um, so we got that bottom plate. And then we just have the switch support plate, which as you can see by the slots in the bottom row, that that is indicative of just how many layouts are are supported here. So this is a 40% with a half num row, a knob, and then the solenoid and electronics. That's bubble wrap again. Um, sit right here. So those are all of our big pieces. Um, I think I can set these aside pretty safely for the moment. We're gonna need the PCB immediately. So we'll keep that handy. But then we'll look at our other components here. I'm just gonna dump the bag up. Screw being ceremonious. Um, knobs, I think it came by default with the brass one that I added the black one, if memory serves. Brass finish, obviously not actually brass. So we got our encoder knobs. I'll just find the encoders as long as we're at it. Standard, you know, I think it's an EC11 encoder. Editor E and we'll put on screen if I'm wrong. Feels like an EC11, it's detented. Um, so that'll be one of the items we are soldering on today. We get a couple little stickies, the Beckwild branding and clunker. That's very funny. I like that. This might have to go on my Pelican case or something. Um, all of our uh, build hardware, if you will. So the bottom plates held on with standoffs. This is pretty typical on kits like this. The reset button is in there for some reason. We got some feats. Um, I'm probably not going to put the feet on right away. I'm not going to have time to film the sound tests tonight anyway. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about having this like be functional or perfect rather by the end of the video I do want it to be functional by the end of the video, but be perfect by the end of the video I ordered some cone feet from Mechwild to give it a little bit of an angle I'm not a huge fan of flat keyboards, so we'll see how many of those I end up using and then, like I mentioned the reset switch uh, This baggie is a lot of extra parts uh, It is the headers from the controller I won't be using so I'm gonna hot socket hot swap socket this um, and then all the leftover diodes from the kit. So we actually won't be using that baggie. This is very cool. This was an add-on you can buy. I'm just gonna keep this in my tool chest. Oh, oh God. From now on, uh, it's a diode bender. You put five diodes across it at a time, and then you can just bend them over this, and they're the right hole spacing, which I think is a pretty great use of 3D printing. So big fan of that. Here are little uh, acrylic windows. I believe they end up like this, because this one's over the solenoid, so it's a little higher, because that's a pretty tall component. Come back to that, that's the exciting bag. Um, oh, I didn't quite get enough uh, Milmax sockets uh, with the kit, so I dipped into the ones from the Boston to do the space bars. That's what those are. These are the pins for hot socket, hot swap socket, and gosh dang it, the controller. So we'll, we'll be dealing with those very fine little pins today. Speaking of our controller, it is a Pro Micro with a USB-C connector on it. Um, and then our fun electronics, air quotes fun electronics. I think they're fun. The controller's pretty fun, I guess, too, actually. We have our, this is pretty much all in service of the, the solenoid. I should say. We've got this resistor here. I do not know enough about solenoids to know why it needs a resistor, but we have one. So we'll be doing that pretty much right off the bat. We have a transistor for controlling the power delivery to the solenoid, I imagine. That is what goes in the little bite of the uh, PCB here, the heat sink of the transistor up here. I guess, is it a heat sink when it's by itself? That hole is there so you can screw it to a heat sink. I guess it's a tiny heat sink when it's just in the state it's in now. Uh, a flyback diode, which is a fun, chunky uh, embodiment of the diode technology. Um, you use flyback diodes when there's sudden uh, drops or spikes in current in a circuit, um, which brings us to 
the clunkiest part of the clunker, the solenoid. Um, the solenoid is incredibly power hungry. It's literally the first thing they mentioned in the build guide. Um, so that's why the flyback diode is involved because this goes from needing no current voltage, anything like that, to suddenly needing a lot to uh, move and uh, make its, its noise. So <laughs> hence the flyback diode because um, this thing has a solenoid on it, making it just the most ridiculous 40. Um, I'm really excited about this. I, I like novelty um, and this definitely accomplishes that. So that is our uh, parts list, Duroc V2 stabs, big wig linears, DSA milkshake, at least for the moment, mill max to the PCB, and then we need to solder on the rest of the stuff. I honestly think this should go pretty quickly except for um, the PC, the PCB, the controller sockets. Um, I know it's much that is difficult, it's just time consuming because there's a lot of them and you want to make sure you get it, you know, uh, uh, you, you want the socks to be normal to the surface of the PCB as much as possible uh, so that uh, things don't get weird, especially when it's socketable like that. When it's not socketable, yeah, it kind of doesn't matter. It's staying in place, but you really, I, I've learned you really want to socket uh, these controllers because if they fail, that is a huge pain in the butt to desolder, even with a desoldering gun like I have because the, the pitch of the contacts is, is so tight. So uh, if you look at the build guide moving into the build here, if you look at the build guide, um, I have gone out of order. You're not supposed to do um, diodes first. I did diodes first and the Milmax sockets because I didn't want y'all to have to sit through that and I only wanted to go into video shooting mode once. Um, I also think you probably should do these first. I'm a big believer in doing your components. Obviously, unless there's like an assembly order thing where like one component covers another, which isn't the case with these. At least I could, from what I could tell in the build guide, maybe I'm gonna hit a huge pitfall here that I'm not aware of. Um, I, I'm a firm believer in doing things kind of in Z height order. And if you look at like the diodes, they barely stand off the bottom of the PCB and the, the Milmax sockets even less so. So like these are very low Z height objects. I always believe you should start with those. That might be a matter of taste. Maybe I'm super in the wrong here. I don't know, but I think it's the right thing to do. So the official first step of the build guide is to uh, solder in your resistor. And now this stuff is important to do in order because some of this goes underneath the microcontroller. So obviously, you know, gotta do things when you can. I'm gonna use my fancy dancy little uh, diode bender here. Assuming this is the right pitch. Uh, resistors, it does not matter which direction they go in. They are agnostic in their polarity. That is not true of all components. I'll make sure to call that when it's not. Diodes, for instance, like the 50 or so on the back of the board here, uh, diodes are definitionally uh, very polarity sensitive. Uh, so make sure you get, get those right. Resistors do not care. They pass current both directions. Um, and then next after this is the transistor. I wonder if I can, now nah, they're really close together. Let me get this soldered and clipped. Um, very exciting, and it might happen during this video. I've almost finished a roll of solder. How about that? Admittedly, that wasn't a huge roll of solder. My next one is uh, bigger. I think my next one's a one kilogram roll. I don't know what that one was to begin with. But it's like when you uh, finish a tube of chapstick or something, it's, it's always exciting. And I, I'm, I'm about to finish a roll of solder, which is, I feel even more rare. I mean, I guess unless you have a hobby like this where you solder a lot, but. I don't think I've ever personally finished a roll of solder because a lot of the soldering I did was in high school. Um, and not uh, this is the first time I've had a personal home shop where I've had a roll of solder in use for any length of time. I am happy with those. Let's cut those legs off. It has been a while since I recorded a video um, by the time this is out, well, actually, I mean, as of speaking right now, my recap video of the London meetup is up. That was a blast. I had an excellent time uh, in London. I didn't go for the meetup. It actually just happened to be at the same time, which was very fortuitous. Um, had just a great time there. Um, and been uh, doing some other traveling this summer. So I have been around and have not been building keyboards and I'm a student. I'm in night school, I should say. I'm about to go back to school for the term, so I'm trying to get this done before all that happens because I won't have time to do a solder build like this uh, for, for a little while. 
So I wanted to get this done. And I've got another meetup coming up here in the Bay Area really soon. I think this would be a fun keyboard to bring. I'm gonna tape down this transistor. Um, I kind of talked through it, but I just bent down the legs, right where they get thick, per the recommendation of the build guide, um, so that they fit into their holes. This only, at least I'm look at the build guide again here, appears to only face one direction. Yeah, it can only go in one way, really. Um, but it can wiggle back and forth until it's soldered in place. So I'm going to tape it down because this is visible. Okay, now we're moving into the controller here. So the controller, oh, the controller is actually on the bottom of this duct. So you can see the transistor. So of course it's on the underside. So what we're doing is we are socketing this controller. So what we have here are functionally and maybe literally little banks of Milmax sockets. So these are what will get soldered into the board. And then we're gonna solder in these itty bitty little pins into the controller and then the pins will socket into these. So right now what it's calling for is actually just soldering in just the pins for the moment. That's kind of an order of operations thing with this board. Um, so it's gonna be this one and this one. So I'm gonna follow that and only solder in my sockets for the moment. Um, and then we'll do the pins when the guide says Normally you would solder this on if that makes sense. We're gonna we're gonna loop back to it um, I'm gonna go into a time-lapse or just straight cut through this here All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape these so that they are normal uh, to the board as possible um, And then solder them in but it's like 20 connections So you don't need to listen to me ramble while I do that So enjoy the time-lapse and we will move on to step four on the other side That went quite smoothly. They are just about as normal to the board as I think I'm gonna. As I think I'm gonna get them. Uh, next up is the. Uh, let's see. They go on the top. The uh, reset switch for the PCB and the flyback diode. So I'm gonna do both of those, and I'll be back with you again. Okay, um, flyback diode, very, very thick legs because it's designed for high uh, current loads, I would assume. Uh, I absolutely dumped solder onto one end of it, uh, the, the left end. The solder flowed down through the hole over the leg, so it, that's not a bad thing, and I don't want to continue heating it to fix that necessarily. Um, if I do find it is visually obtrusive, I may just full on replace that component at some point, but uh, it's more just, you know, it adds to the clunkiness of the board. Uh, all that said, the the switch and flyback soldered on just fine. The flyback required a ton of heat because of these thick legs, um, which I think is probably what led me to get a little distracted and way flood, uh, over flood that, that leg. But you know what? It's definitely electrically contacted. <laughs> now, I did, you may have seen in the time lapse, try to use my solder pump uh, to suck off just a little bit, and uh, that didn't super duper work. So, you know what? We're gonna leave it, and we're gonna move forward with a slightly clunkier clunker. I think it's on brand. So, let's, you know, full send. Uh, step six solenoid. So, now it's it says very complicated step, read through. So, I'm, I'm gonna read through here. So they want you to cut off. Oh, of course, there's a, 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 I forget exactly what kind of connector this is on here. It's not a mini Molex, I forget what this is. Um, th this is on here, so we have to cut this off because we're, we're, we're soldering it. So the, um, you want to have one to two inches of slack. 
and then tie a knot into the wires. Doesn't that just take up more slack? Okay, so the knot is just kind of an aesthetic thing that allows you to adjust the slack after you mount it. I guess that does make sense, actually. It's almost like I should trust the people <laughs> who designed things instead of thinking I know better than them. But, such is my curse. I think I know better than too many people, and I'm working on it. Um, it says you secure it with the short four millimeter screws. That sure looks about like four millimeters to me. Oh, I guess I have a, a grid right over here. Yeah, that sure seems like four millimeters to me. For some reason, they have you mount it after you cut the slack. I'm gonna mount it and then cut the slack again. Look at me, uh, thinking I know better than the designer of something after I just said I need to stop that. But I'm genuinely curious why you do it in the other order. So we're gonna learn together by disobeying. Wow, that explains a lot about me as a person. We're gonna learn together by disobeying is a sentence I just said. That, um, wow, Ian. <laughs> if you know me at all, that sentence is very funny. And very accurate. Such is my curse. So, Man, I would really rather just skip the knot. And especially like they're showing it against a white PCB so you kind of get the texture of the knot when you look at it. I would rather just have these wires go, go straight on in, if, if I'm being honest. So I'm gonna cut them about right, right there. No going back now. Or I have to order a new solenoid and film this later anyway. That is. Future Ian's problem. Uh, wire stripper. I have a nicer, like those single action wire strippers somewhere. I think it's in my box of 3D printing parts and no. Um, is the gauge visible on this? Or am I just gonna have to do a dry run here? Looks like a dry run. Whoa, okay, that was perfect. 26 it is. Bravo, Ian. And they want you to strip about a quarter inch off of each one. Can't do. Okay, I see this part would be easier with the solenoid off. But perfectly workable. Bam. Stripped. Get the header out of the way here, because we're not gonna need that. That didn't even occur to me. I was like, man, there's a lot of wire on this solenoid. Did not even occur to me we'd be cutting most of it off. We shouldn't need strippers anymore, so I'll put those away. Oh, is this my other stripper? What is this? Oh, yeah, this is my single action stripper. Gosh damn, well, okay. No, no, I have it, I don't wanna try it now. Oh, you know what? This only goes to, uh, 20. I don't actually think this would work on this wire. I think this, this is for two high of gauges. I think my finer single action one is in, yeah, that just stretched out the stuff. All right, that worked. I think my finer gauge, no pun intended, or uh, that it actually is just actually finer gauge. Um, one is, I think that's one of my 3D printing parts box. So now it says to tin these. Oh, they are strand. It didn't look stranded. The strands are so close together. So we're gonna give those a little twist. God, I look pale in my in-camera monitor. I wonder if that may be fixed in color correction. I am not that pale right now. I guess this is pretty cool light. Yeah, whatever. So let's tin these up. Soldering iron in there. Heat the ends of these. Get them tinned up. I usually tin pretty lightly because I also tend 
I mean, as my flyback diode, just learned I also tend to use a little too much solder, generally. Always fun doing Milmax sockets, because you have to be, like, so slow and careful with those. All right, now the where the wires go do not matter with the solenoid, because you're just applying a voltage to a coil. So I'm going to do whichever orientation looks See, I like the way just like the little wire arc looks. The knot would definitely look cool against the white PCB because you'd get the texture. I like the way that looks. And it looks like, yeah, solenoid's totally free. It's not going to crash into those loops. I think that's pretty banging. I like that. So now we're going to flip this bad boy and actually solder those to their contacts. This is such a stupid board. I'm so excited. Also, selfishly, this is like a really easy before and after sound test to film because I just have to turn the solenoid off and I get a sick A-B test. And like a relevant A-B test too. I'm not just like totally phoning it in. Like that's actually the most interesting A-B to do about this board. And I get to do it basically for free. I don't have to change keycaps or switches or, or anything like that. Which as a uh, person with soon to be much more limited time being back in class, I appreciate it. Because I will have to shoot these sound tests after I'm back in school, I'm sure. I've got a very busy week here. Okay. Screw in the solenoid. Manage the knot. We're not doing the knot, so no worries there. Step seven. This is where they have you do uh, diodes. So if you're following along at home and don't want to do the diodes first like me, this is when you do them. Having now seen where the board air quotes should be when you do diodes, I highly recommend doing the diodes first. And mill maxing if you're going to. So... Take that as you will. What is so tall under here? Oh, the sockets, duh. Ian, get it together, man. I, I don't normally build this late. Uh, it is uh, nearly 8.10 on a night where I have already worked during the day. Um, but this is when I have the time to do this. And I did all the soldering of the Milmax and the diodes over the weekend. So, you know, it all kind of shakes out. Next up is our encoder. Is our encoder next? Does that make sense? I guess it is our last electrical component. Except for, oh, you know what? We're gonna go out of order again. The reason they have you do this now is because if you're soldering in switches, there's a switch you have to solder in before the controller. Since we're mill maxed, that doesn't apply to us. So I, I actually should have done it before this even so the board laid flatter. Um, we're gonna do our, our microcontroller now. I just need to find something approximately as tall as the, uh, uh, solenoid to shove under this end. I think that's actually about the height of a Sharpie, it looks like. I got a hell of Sharpies in here. We're gonna use the red one. That feels right about right. And then we're gonna use the green one under this edge so that we're more or less stable. We're pretty close. Um, yeah, so this switch right here is typically under the microcontroller. So they want you to solder in the encoder so you can put the plate on so you can do that switch and then do your controller. However, because we're socketing, socketing, not a hot swap socketing, it's just socketing. We're socketing our controller. Um, oh boy, it's late. Um, <laughs> um, since we're socketing our controller, I wanna do that now. So I'm going to get little pins all over the place. My three remaining Milmax sockets from the kit. One short. I was one short of being able to use all kit ones. It's okay. I used four for the space bar, so they were matchy-matchy. So I guess I, it all works out. Now, I found putting these in was much easier with my needle nose. So I'm going to grab those. So the way I lean doing this on the internet because this isn't like an official thing this is like one of those community things as far as i can tell is you put all your pins into your socket so i'm going to do that over time lapse here okay so as i was saying um with my pliers, that seemed to be easiest. You put in, oh boy, as I drop more of them, these 
itty bitty little probably brass coated pins. I actually don't know what they're made of. Um, into these sockets that we soldered in earlier. What baggie did these go in? I'm collecting these up in the baggie might not even be open. Um, insert them. I found one of those pliers to work well. I will hold it up to show you here momentarily. And it looks like, yeah, actually, yeah, you actually saw it on the Pro Micro upside down. Isn't that interesting? See, so glad I read the build guide. We've got our pins in our sockets. Am I missing one? I looked on the camera monitor like I was missing one. We got the pins sticking out of there. And so now we take our Pro Micro, which in this case mounts upside down. You drop that over and then you solder this in place to the pins. And you really don't want to overflow solder on these. Number one, because it's easy to bridge. These are, contacts are very close. But then you also might solder one of the pins into the socket, which is no good. So I want to be pretty light and delicate with this. I'm going to get these soldered over time lapse. Be right back with you. Okay, we got those soldered in, so moment of truth. Ah, look at that. Much why I screamed. Um, now, those gold pins are all sticking out of our controller. How about that? Doesn't look like I leaked any solder. Good job, Pastian. Momentarily, Pastian. And it should press right back into place. How about that? Now I'm at least gonna mute the audio here because I'm about to test this and I don't want y'all to hear the solenoid uh, until typing time. Because surprises are fun. Delayed gratification is a good thing for your brain. Oh, this is so stupid. Wow. This is so dumb. And it works, which is great news. I love when things work. I forgot I plugged in another USB-C cable to this computer for testing. Been unplugging my main keyboard like a jabroni. Didn't need to do that. All right, our uh, controller works. Our solenoid works, which you will get to hear in the sound tests with proper audio. So we do this clunker justice. Um, so back to our regularly scheduled programming. Let's let's get back on track here with the the build guide. Now it is time to do the encoder. I am glad I waited to do the encoder until after I had the controller done um, because the controller is a much more tedious job. The encoder has big chunky uh, contacts that are much easier to solder. This build not brought to you by Mountain Dew or Taco Bell, uh, but please sponsor me. God, this stuff's good. I've heard it's just Mountain Dew and Blue Powerade mix. I should actually try that at some point. Ah. It's also much better straight from the restaurant. <coughs> but uh, you can't be the convenience of having it in your fridge. So, um, encoder. Pretty obvious how it goes in because its pins are asymmetrical. On one side you have three pins. On the other side you have two pins. And on the sides you have retention clips. You solder all of them down. I suppose the retention clips are optional. I don't recommend it. And it looks like there's actually a footprint to replace this with a switch if you'd rather have a switch here. But what fun is that? If you're gonna go absurd, go full absurd. I guess if you're worried about like Z height, like if you're gonna put this in your backpack a lot, you're not a knob uh, user, and you know that about yourself going into this project, uh, I guess you could leave the encoder off and buy yourself a little Z height back in your backpack. And I guess if something's gonna catch on something in a backpack, the encoder seems like the most likely offender there. Come on, buddy, there we go. Stuff. I'm just gonna flare these legs out a little bit to hold it flush against the PCB because it was a little droopy. Um, so I'm going to start with the retention clips, which I don't think are electrically conductive. I don't think these are grounds or anything. They might be, but I still like soldering them down because knobs undergo a lot of shear force when you turn them. And the bigger, chunkier, and the more contacts you can transmit that force through on your PCB, the less likely you are to damage your PCB. Admittedly, I think damaging PCBs is kind of like a bygone 
concern. Um, PCBs seem to be pretty darn resilient these days. I say these days like I'm a bajillion years old, but I'm 27. Um, but when I when I was learning to solder and stuff, PCBs were much flakier even then. So I'm not sure if like switching to multi-layer helped if the um, uh, formulation of the FR4 is better, traces are more robust, maybe there's some new metallic component in the sandwich layers of the board. I'm not sure, but I feel like PCBs were much touchier when I was learning to solder. Oh my god, over a decade ago. <laughs> Gross. Ah, all right, made myself sad. Moving on. Encoder, solder. Check. Next up is... Oh, stabs. Yeah, we're doing with electrical components. Look at that. So for stabs, we need three sets, which is why I have three sets prepared. Shocking, I know. We need one for left shift. Left shift? Left shift, yep. Um, our space bar, one of our keys formerly known as space bar, I actually don't know, but this maps to whole new world, 40s. Uh, and then our other not a space bar. It looks like those are centered up, yes sir. So again, um, these are Duroc V2 stabilizers, the all black housings, that doesn't make a difference other than aesthetic. Um, they have XHT BDZ lubricant on the wires, and they have Crytox 205 grade zero on the housings. And hopefully don't tick, but it's a hot spot board, so if they do, NBD. I have to pull like four switches. No, it's like 50 switches. Still less than any other board I own. I'm really intimidated by this thing if that has not come through clearly in my sarcasm. Uh, I am not an amazing typist, um, form-wise. My speed's okay. I actually just cracked 100 on monkey type for the first time this week. Um, but my form is not very good. That being said, actually, the last, air quotes weird, keyboard I got was the AV3, which was my first Arizu. Oh, actually, that was my first Arizu. I had the Maja before that, but I didn't use it terribly much because it was not to my taste. The AV3 was the first Arizu I used a lot. Um, well, I, yeah, I guess I used the Maja a fair amount. Anyway, switching to Arizu, the last time I got a weird keyboard layout, um, my typing form didn't improve a lot, so, you know, maybe this will be a good thing. Maybe I will learn much from using this board. Um, okay, stabilizers. Ba, 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 test fit, blah, 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 blah. Step 10 is called that one switch in the way. <laughs> that one switch that is in the way, sorry. Um, here's why we didn't solder on the Pro Micro yet. There's one switch, get in the way, it can't be soldered, it's safer to do beforehand. If you solder on the Pro Micro already, you can always salvage it. Just don't push your iron against the Pro Micro. First thing I'd like to point out, in case you forgot, switches go through the switch plate. Um, if you, you can choose, you could choose not to use a switch plate for this board, but let's assume you're, you aren't choosing to not use it. That's a sentence. I like to put several switches in the corners. I don't solder them in place yet. They're just to keep things steady. Solder in that one, then solder on the Pro Micro, and solder the rest of the switches. And then we're into physical assembly. Okay, so for us, because we mill maxed, um, we are snapping in switches. No soldering switches for us which is great because I didn't have switches uh, ready to commit to this board. So, very good news that I, I get to try some switches uh, on, on this bad boy. So now you can kind of see a little bit better that that cutout shows off the electronics in the upper right. Um, I am also of the persuasion, I was looking for my, one of my normal switch containers. I am also of the persuasion that you should uh, put in your corner switches first. Start with just some of these here, so not reaching in the container like a Pringle can. Oh, there's a surprise inside. <gasps> it's like a box of cereal. A keeb that can be bought isn't worth having. That's foreboding. Is that implying I need to steal my keyboards? Or that I have to build my, oh, a keeb that can be bought. Maybe they mean like a, a whole keyboard, like don't buy off the shelf keyboards. I don't know, it's kind of threatening, but I like it. 
It matches the art motif of the uh, the villainy series of, of switches. So all that to say, I also have the persuasion of stamping in corner switches, checking to make sure my legs aren't bent. Those snap in affirmatively, but aren't annoyingly tight. You love to see that. Ooh, that one's pretty tight. May have spoken too soon. Nope, I caught a leg. That's my fault. That one's on me. So we're going to And I may end up taking the plate back off, snapping all the switches, and then socketing the switches. Always a possibility. That works much better than I thought it would have. Uh, what board did I have to do that on recently? Oh, I recently rebuilt my Mode 80 um, with a poly polycarbonate, a plate, which was very soft, and I just snap all the switches into the plate and then socket them all in. That board is also the best it's ever been with that polycarbonate plate. I've got that and stock Emo Go Go linears from Prevail. Okay, yeah, these are tight, so we're going to pop this off. We're not going to do the bottom row because the bottom row is chaos. But I'm going to go through, I'm going to snap all these into the plate, then I'm going to attach them to the PCB. So, see you on the other side of that. So we've got all the ones worth snapping at this point snapped in. And now we're going to begin the nerve-wracking act of socketing in a bunch of switches. That one's already on the wrong side. Come on in. All at once. This is much easier with the KL sockets because they kind of have a funnel at the top in the plastic. Milmax are just flat <laughs> on top. So if you don't line up your pins, you're going to have a bad time. It's amazing how many sentences you can end with. If you don't blank, you're going to have a bad time. It's a lot of caution to be had in the world. Like not enough gets practiced, although so far, gosh dang it, this feels like it's going pretty well. I hate to say it out loud, but I think that went really well. Shh, don't tell the BCB I said that. <laughs> two pins, 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 two pins. Wow, that one is right under the pro micro. They were not kidding. Two pins, 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 two pins. Questionably two elks. There's no switch in that one. All right, sanity check passed. Two pins, 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 two pins. Hey, how about that? That remarkably went very well. I think I quite poured out enough. Switches here. That still does not feel like enough. All right, now we're gonna do the ones that would have fallen out of the plate. Do a left shift. We're gonna do. This is gonna be the greater than symbol, I believe, which is why I'm doing split shift. Normally, you only get the less than symbol. This gets you let uh, Z X C V B N M less than, greater than, and then shift, yeah. So that's why we're splitting that, and I think that's why it's the default, probably, so your full uh, bottom row, because comma and period are very common punctuation, um, whereas like losing your brackets and quotes and colons and stuff, or not, not losing them, but putting them on a layer, I think that tracks. And then we've got a pretty standard bottom row, actually. Um, three mods on either side, and then split space. Really not that exotic. Uh, not not exotic, admittedly, but I feel like that's probably the most familiar part of this board. The weirdest part's definitely the half num row. Um, most 40s don't have num rows at all, um, so I guess I'll take it. <laughs> I'll be curious to see how I end up using this keyboard. Because I'm like a big TKL, fan because I use my F row like a lot <laughs> and this doesn't even have a full number row so uh, I, yeah the, the journey with this keyboard is one I'm excited about I've got a very close friend in the hobby who is a big 40s enthusiast even sub 40s for that matter so I, I am in good company in terms of getting help uh, when I need it I am sure but they're wrecking.
nonetheless. And the, the upside of this being such a cheap kit um, is that it's one got a lot of character. Um, but the other upside is that if I don't like it, it's not a huge loss. I can take the switches out and I can, you know, just look at it. Or I can just, you know, put a, a, a pair of pair set. Um, it's not that small of a keyboard. I can just put a set of switches in I don't care about as much. Um, and leave it assembled and pull it off the wall every now and then and, and use it. Um, so I think this is a good 40 to learn on rather than getting like a, you know, a, a mode quality board or something for my for my first 40. And then discover I hate it and uh, now all this money and murmur. Mur. Okay. Um, I'm going to quick take this off screen and test the switches. So give me a moment here. All right, great news. Only one switch didn't fire the solenoid, and it's because I socketed it into the wrong spot. I love when it's user error. I can totally fix user error. I guess I love it when it's user error, when I know it's user error, when it's not user error, or when it is user error, but I can't figure it out. That's annoying, but uh, easy peasy. It just wasn't socketed in. The solenoid is hysterical. I can't wait for y'all to hear this sound test. Um, yeah, that, that's so funny. What a weird keyboard. I love this. Alrighty. Not every standoff you receive... We're moving on to standoffs in the acrylic here. Not every standoff you receive will be used. This will this is to allow for other acrylic guard options we might want to use in the future. That's interesting. For this step, we'll be using the 12 millimeters and the 15 millimeters and the 8 millimeters. 8. Ah, okay. I see. So you got three style, well two styles, three heights, I suppose you're only getting height order. You've got the eight millimeter on the bottom that has a male thread on one end. That's what goes between the PCB and the bottom plate. You got a 12 millimeter in the middle. That's what goes between the PCB and the shorter acrylic. Then a 15, which goes between the PCB and the taller acrylic. That's pretty slick. And then there are three other standoffs through here that I imagine we probably screw in to place. Pass through screws. And for those ones, you use dual female standoffs. And then you screw the bottom on. Okay, cool. I'm going to go through the building. Then also is a time lapse. And uh, then I think it'll be key cap time. How exciting. We're almost finished. And it's not even 9 o'clock yet. We're making great time. So see you on the other side. Alrighty, we've got our standoffs and acrylic in place. We will save the last layer of the acrylic for a nice peel reveal at the end. We've got our thematic bottom plate there. Uh, these big holes here are where the cone feet will screw in to give it a bit of an angle. So I'll, I'll do that once I have them. They should be here later this week. Um, it's key cap time. Uh, I realized I have not washed my hands since I finished soldering, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Alrighty. One note I forgot to make about the switches. Um, the HDPE high, uh, tops, which I believe is high density polyethylene, like I said before, very soft. Um, that is also the material, the stabbers, the key front, key front, key front, um, stabilizers will be made of. I'm interested to try those. I've already ordered some. They're on pre-order right now. I, I feel like I can dent this with my fingernail. It's a really interestingly soft plastic. Um, yeah, just want to make sure I noted that before I, before I forgot again. So it is uh, key cap time. So I am way out of my depth here in terms of what keycaps go where. So I'm gonna look at their reference image, pretty much put them on like that, and then just be open to the fact that I might need to uh, change them. Just turning off my soldering iron here. Oh, let me clean it one more time before it cools off. Um, let's really get this out of the way too and remove a little bit of noise. Shouldn't need to do any more soldering here. Um, so I'm just pretty much going to put on the keycaps as they show in the reference image and be open to the fact that I'll be incorrect about that. So, going to time lapse through that as usual, not a very interesting process. Once again, DSA milkshake from Novel Keys designed by Beep. Let's do it. All 
all capped up. Looking great. I love these weirdo milkshake legends. Let's do a little peeling, shall we? Uh, that's not going to sound like a lot, so I'm going to not going to hold it up to the mic. Let's do the little one first. This is going to reveal our transistor and our flyback diode. Very nice. And then the star of the show, the solenoid. Oh, yeah. That, my friends, is the MechWild Clunker. Ain't she adorable? Look, look, at, look at the little guy. So, 40%, half numero, knob, solenoid. Big claims to fame here. I think I have the keycaps right. I don't know. We'll figure it out. And ultimately, it's Weirdo Legends. So, who says they mean anything at all? Am I right? Um. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, following this will be a sound test comparing with the solenoid uh, on versus off. Um, again, this, uh, I'll either keep um, DSA. Oh, oh, my pinky rests. Oh boy, this is weird. Um, oh, I may switch this out for GMK minimal if I have the right keys. We'll see. I'm honestly kind of like the way that sounds. These big wig switches feel very good um, from the factory uh, with their, their PBT bottoms. Now, I don't recall, are these factory lubed at all? I, I'm leaning towards no, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna verify here. Switches, big wig linears. Oh, what are the other ones called? I was speculating at the beginning. Honeycomb linears, they've got a polycarb top and uh, a nylon bottom, which is an interesting combination. Um, not sure it's what I'm looking for right now in my life, but uh, yes, okay, so these are slightly factory looped. Oh, it's interesting, I can feel a little bit of like the signature kind of cherry scratch, but it's like very consistent. I, I, I like it. I imagine the sound test probably will be with these keycaps, because I'm actually pretty pleased with how this sounds right now. Um, but there you go. That's that is the Mech Wild clunker. You can see our Pro Micro hiding away down there with very little clearance. Goodness gracious, that is close. Um, our little dual height acrylic window. That's pretty neato burrito. I like this. It's terrifying, but I like it. And I feel like that's that's kind of a a sweet spot in life to be. Uh, a little scared of stuff, but excited to try it. So, thank you so much for watching. Following will be the sound test, comparing with and without the solenoid, um, with the big wig linear switches, and a DSA milkshake from Novel Keys and Beep. Um, if you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, and if you wanna see more, hit subscribe. It is free, and you can unsubscribe the moment you're bored of watching a guy talk about keyboards. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.